warm welcome to our online service today as we come to celebrate the Epiphany, recalling the wise men visiting the child Jesus and bringing their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. This celebration, often referred to as the manifestation of Christ, symbolises Jesus being shown to the whole world. We will hear more of the visit of the wise men in the reflection, which today is given by the Reverend Murray Andrews, Sedgmore Deanery Mission in Abler. As we come and gather to worship and celebrate the Epiphany, we say, God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Other than recording this song to be used today, I haven't heard it since the mid-1950s. On that occasion I was wearing my dressing gown and had a tea towel on my head. Yep. I was playing the part of a wise man in our primary school nativity play, but had little or no comprehension of what was being sung. I've enjoyed re-encountering this song this week, without the dressing gown and tea towel, and hopefully with perhaps a little more understanding. I hope you enjoy it too. We sing, Wise Men Seeking Jesus Travelled From Afar. say sorry to God for the things that we have done wrong, for the things that we should have done but have not done. And we bring these before God in penitence, seeking his forgiveness. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. 
let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning we hear words from the Gospel of Matthew, read by Peter. This will be followed by the reflection from the Reverend Murray Andrews and music from Frida, Cathy and Sarah. The wise men from the east followed the star to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Thanks be to God. Well, hello. It's so good to be with you today, even if it is remotely. And today we're thinking about Epiphany. Now, there can't be many people who do not like receiving presents. I, for one, enjoy the anticipation and the unwrapping of the bits of paper and the smile on people's faces as they receive them with grateful acceptance. It's what happens in our house on Christmas morning. Presents given, presents received. When we receive a present, we don't usually judge it, do we, on its value? Well, we shouldn't. It's about the thoughts and the effort, the consideration given in that gift. Last Christmas, I'll show you this, it's a watch. This was given to me by my wife and it's a special running watch and I can bore for England about running. It was thoughtful, what I wanted, I use it every day and it has been used exactly what I wanted and needed. I came across this story of a family in America and I was listening to this story. It just reminded me of the importance of family and community and connection. Well, this family, this American pastor said this. Things were so financially tight in their house that his wife and himself decided they couldn't afford to give presents. That's a tough decision to make. And so they called their two children and they sat around the kitchen table and they explained the situation. And they said, what are we going to do? And then suddenly the son said, I know. Why don't we give each member of the family some tokens? You know, I'll wash up for a month 
uh, you'll do a chore here and there and whatever. And uh, so the, the pastor and the wife thought about this hard and uh, went away. And on Christmas morning, they handed out the, the, the booklets of tokens as a gift and they were anti-grounding tickets. You know, the sort where you, your children have gone off and done something wrong and um, they're not allowed out and they could present this ticket and be let off. Well, the Christmas came and went and they had a great time. And, um, and what, what happened was that several years later, the daughter had gone to college and she'd come home and uh, she went out. And of course, when you're back at your parents' house, there are certain rules. And the daughter actually came home extremely late. It was the early hours of the next day. The father was so angry that in the morning he just shouted and tore into her and said, right, you're grounded for a month. And amongst the tears and the shouting and the wondering, suddenly the daughter just disappeared. She went off to her room and she came back and the pastor thought, well, the daughter's going to come back now and, and, and say sorry. There was a, a little smile on her face. And he thought, oh, she's learned a lesson. But as they, he was sitting there, she handed him a bit of paper, which he immediately thought was a, an apology. And he opened it and he read it and it was an anti-grounding ticket. And amongst his annoyance, a brief smile appeared because he couldn't but honour that gift he'd given all those years before. Whilst fuming inside that he'd been double bluffed, he couldn't honour but enjoy that moment. And that family, I'm told, enjoy and remember those stories every Christmas. It's a special time to be together. One way of giving presents. What's this got to do with Epiphany? Well, we know Epiphany is about the wise men and the gifts they bring. Now, I have no idea how much gold, frankincense and myrrh cost, but it was the thought of the Magi that was important to honour the new king that was to be born. They'd seen the signs, they'd read the prophecies, they'd interpreted them, they'd got them slightly wrong as they went to see Herod first. But then they found Jesus, didn't they? They found him and gave him the gifts. Gifts that no ordinary child would want. Gifts that a parent would re reel back in horror at. Gold, okay, lovely gold, put that in the bank. Frankincense and myrrh, the mother would whip them away before Jesus could have sucked them dry. You see, the Magi realised the importance and significance of the birth of the Messiah and gave gifts that would mean so much in his life and in his death. You see, Epiphany reminds us of the manifestation of Christ in his true nature. The gifts given recall to our minds the majesty and his worth, because gold is a king, frankincense is a priest, and myrrh, that message of sacrifice that brings life. More than that, through God's wonderful gift of Jesus himself, we have so much. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, which is normally our epistle reading for this day, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 says this, In him, that is Jesus, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. As we enter 2021, we look back and reel back from 2020 as it's been a difficult year, thrown a few curveballs in our way. But perhaps this new verse we can be encouraged by that whatever happens, God is there for us, no longer remote but accessible. Let me delve a little deeper into that gift, the gift of God to humanity. The words then of that verse are in him, that is Jesus Christ, in him. He's done it all for us through faith in him. That's our choice to believe faith. That's what it's about. You know, when we're given a gift, we have the choice to unwrap it, open it and use it or just put it on the shelf for another day. No, it's our choice. It's faith. And we may 
I'd say it time and time again, God has given us his son that we may believe. He's never going to force him on us, but we have that truth amongst us. It's not a will, you will or you should, it's a may. And what can we do? Approach God. That is enormous. See, the whole of the Old Testament, the people couldn't approach God. And that's why Jesus's birth was so significant. Because we have access to the Father who forgives his children, loves them. Is God too big to approach, too glorious? Well, on one hand, yes, but no, through Christ, we can do it daily. We can approach him with freedom, it says in that verse. Free to choose with no barriers, no cost. We can put up barriers, can't we, when life is difficult, when we're tired and weary. We may say we're too busy. Oh, they come first. No, we have freedom to come to God at any time. And we can come with confidence. Nothing can hold us back because God is waiting for us. His arms are outstretched in love. The year 2021 stretches before us. And I want us to go into this year with this verse in our minds, in our hearts. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Let's own that verse. Let us, with the Apostle Paul, know this to be true and live our lives as though it is. So today, take encouragements and most of all have a very happy new year whatever it may bring amen
together, let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we are at the beginning of 2021, a new year. Archbishop Stephen, the new Archbishop of York, encourages us as we look ahead to draw around our right hand and inside write our hopes, more than one, for 2021. And then to draw around our left hand and write the names of those who are on our hearts now. May I suggest we take a few moments in the next few days to do this as we step into 2021. As we think of our family and our friends here in the Benefice and beyond, let us offer Christ's peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We come now to our prayers, which will be led by Frida. Prayers for Epiphany Sunday Radiant God, light for all people and all places, by the guidance of a star you led the Magi to worship the Christ child. By the light of faith, lead us to worship you in peace and love and guide us in your way. And so we pray in the name of Christ, light of the world. Lord of all, we are reminded on this Epiphany Sunday of the epic journey of the Magi, that great pilgrimage of faith as they stepped out into the unknown, persevering, searching, until their quest was rewarded. We pray that you will open our ears to your call and open our eyes to your glory. We pray for all seekers, and for all who walk in darkness looking for the light. We pray for your church throughout the world, and here in this benefice, that it may be drawn towards you and your perfect light. Jesus, light of the world, give us your light and your peace. Lord God of all, In these uncertain times, we pray for the leaders and rulers of this world, that they may serve your kingdom and not their own desire for power. Father God, we long for the time when the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of Christ, and that the resources of the world may be used for the relief of those in need. We give you thanks that we have heard of the approval of the Oxford vaccine, for the dedication of the scientists, and we pray for its safe and fair rollout. Jesus, light of the world, give us your light and your peace. We pray for all those who live and work in our local communities. The Magi brought gifts to you, and you give your gifts to us. Help us to use those gifts wisely and for the benefit of others. Jesus, light of the world, give us your light and your peace. We pray for all who are in sorrow, pain or distress, especially those known and loved by us. We name them quietly now before you. Fill them with your healing power and a knowledge of your love, your peace, your light. Jesus, light of the world, give us your light and your peace. We pray for ourselves that you would inspire us as you inspired the Magi to journey in faith, following where you would lead until we reach the goal you have set for us. Though we may not know the way ahead and though the path may be hard, 
Keep us walking in your light, travelling steadfastly to journey's end. Teach us to live as a pilgrim people, fixing our eyes on Jesus, until that day when we kneel before the throne of grace and offer our worship to Christ our Lord. Amen. And the special prayer for today. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, us, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And we join all our thoughts and prayers together in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our final song encourages us not just to receive the precious gift that God has given us in Jesus, but to unwrap it and enjoy using it. As our worship draws to a close, let us remember our friends and neighbours in our communities and in this benefice as we say the following prayer together. God our Father, your word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem. 
May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bowed down in worship and offered gifts, reveal to you his glory and pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>